while I worked. William genuinely believes that undeath is a gift. Of course, when you phrase it as eternal life, it sounds appealing, even tantalizing. Even if our specimens are scarcely lucid, and seemingly in tremendous agony. No. That is a fate I would rather avoid. Life is useless, even detrimental, when suffering is abundant. The ancients referred to the process of eternally living through immense suffering as hell. Years ago, I would have scorned at the concept of hell even existing. But, now that I have proven the existence of incorporeal soul matter, an afterlife must exist. Where do lost souls go? What lies beyond the threshold of death? I don't know. But, I aim to prove that death simply doesn't exist. This universe is critically misunderstood. Seldom is anything created, nor destroyed. Matter changes form constantly, but never ceases to exist nor come into existence on its own. I aim to prove this with my experiments. Death is a fabrication. An archaic view of mortality based on primitive human assumptions. Matter cannot be destroyed or created anew. Any missing souls still remain within reality in some other place. With obedient and sentient phantom beings, the barrier can be crossed, and then, shattered. The immortality that these spirits have is worthless. What good is living forever, when error feels like it's on fire? and every nerve pulses through jagged metal and crudely stitched together leather. To understand such things, one must become mechanical. Organic matter is invariably complex, but machines can be deactivated, dismantled. Organic matter cannot be shut down and restarted so easily. But a machine, in theory, should it harbor a soul, could act as the portal between our realm and beyond. Once I find out where lost souls go, I can find out where we came from, in turn. We can work backwards. We weren't created either, we merely changed as all matter does. Joyously, I unravel the myth of our creation, and this is my legacy. I will remove the shackles of mortality from humankind. I am Doctor, and I will abolish death. I will teach the world all about the joy of creation itself. On opening night, William's suit failed during a dress rehearsal. This was my own doing. I intentionally misdesigned the spring-loaded retention locks in William's suit, knowing full well that the spring mechanisms inside the suit would fail, with him inside. He died a predictably painful death, on stage, following his bow at the end of our performance. What a moron. 
But the end result was fascinating, and an eventuality that I had never considered. Despite steel rods piercing William's flesh and puncturing his lungs, William still walks amongst the living. At first, I considered that William may be somehow immortal, but soon enough, I noticed a minor change in his physicality. William has done something that no spirit has ever done before, to my knowledge. He has repossessed his own corpse. My original intention was to give William a nudge later down the line, and have a then freshly deceased William take the blame for the kids that we abducted. But this result is far more interesting. William seems to be utterly devoted to me. My current theory is that he repossessed his own body out of desperation. He essentially re-entered his own corpse, so he could keep going as if he never died. Most peculiar. William will stay as my partner. This development will advance my work by many months perhaps even whole years. William's soul is both extremely unusual in the manner in which it possessed its vessel, but also in the fact that he has no idea what I've done to him, unlike the others. He will do anything that I tell him to do. He will act with complete obedience. William foolishly thinks that he has hidden this from me, but I can assure you that I can use this to my advantage. What would happen if William was to die again and repossess the same vessel? What if I were to damage his brain or remove his organs whilst he slept? Would he keep repossessing his old body just to stay with me? How far is this soul willing to go for me? How much pain will this soul endure just to stay here with me? If his soul was to pass on to the afterlife, could I trust it to come back? This may be the breakthrough that I was hoping for. My previous plan of intimidating and scaring the souls of lost children with violence and electrostatic forces was far too convoluted. William is the only test subject that I need now. The trust that William has placed in me is ill-founded. Now. My work can truly begin. Henry, we need to chunk. Do we, Willie? Yes, we sure do. Ever since we abducted that little girl. Everything in it has been with his funk. Tables empty in themselves, things moving. Customers here and whispers about us. About what we've done. And those robots have turned aggressive. Spring body almost big my hand off during routine maintenance. I don't want to be inside that thing anymore. I knew that this was a bad idea. You lied to me. You took her life away, and we don't even have a third robot here. None of this was to make them more lifeline. What we've killed is our own dream. Shush. Relax, William. I know what I'm doing. I'm working on the solution to our problems right now. 
What's that on your desk? Henry. It looks like... A marionette. This isn't just any marionette, Willy. This is a vessel for our little friend. I... I see. We've killed beyond our means, Willy. You mean you killed beyond your means? In any case, this puppet is the solution to all of our problems. The moment that dumb girl enters this puppet, she'll be stuck as a puppet. And then, she'll be our puppet, being pulled by our strings. Unable to harm us like the other two can. Okay, I just... What about the abductions? Freddy Fazbender says better looking robots and as if bad three children get abducted in their restaurant. Three kids have died here. The police will... Relax, Willie. I've pinned the three missing children on our missing night guard. He's lying half dead in the back. The police will presume that he took the kids away. Poor fool probably won't even get a gravestone. The suits have been bleached. This is a minor hiccup. What, Freddy's? I will pay a visit to Freddy's soon. Those three dead children will look like nothing compared to the five children that are going to go missing at Freddy's next week. Henry, I don't like this. Willie, this is our dream. Yeah, but... This is what we have to do. Our diner. Our family. Our dream. This is what you wanted. Henry, I... You wanted this. Okay. Now, go talk to the police. Make it out like that night guard was always a soulless creep. I'll finish this puppet. William has proven to be a most intriguing test subject. From my possessed animatronics, I've noticed that souls seem to be capable of retaining a limited amount of memories. Upon interacting with my victims, I realized that they seem to remember who I am, occasionally and respond with defensive, animalistic aggression. Unfortunately, this memory doesn't seem to apply to all human behaviors, such as the ability to speak. Granted, Fred Bear's lips are unable to curl into the shapes needed to imitate human speech. But William has not seen a single attempt to speak come from the animatronics during routine surveillance. 
Fred Bear growled at him once, but that hardly counts. Thankfully, William has provided me with a way to quantifiably measure how much memory and what kinds of memory are retained in the soul. Once a month, I anesthetize William and remove one of his vital organs, or typically a portion of his brain. Usually, tissue from the frontal lobe, due to it being a generously accessible mass of neurological material. Surprisingly, William doesn't seem to be suffering from dementiated memory loss, but rather a shift in personality. His conscience is unburdening itself, and he has began to ask substantially fewer questions about the ethics of our work. At any rate, at least I know I've begun to leave William alone with the animatronics at night. Unbeknownst to him, he is being recorded around the clock allowing me to watch him from afar and without tainting my results with his sentimentality. Sometimes William speaks to himself. I'd rather not think about what he's said lately. Work continues as usual. I will make the impossible possible. William is a useless excuse for a test subject. His crime has burdened my analytics, and he no longer shows any rate of change, even with the entire internal organs being removed. Even without a heart, he is unchanging, unyielding. I made the mistake of telling him about my deceased son, David. And now William has run wild with the idea of replacing him and for me to become the father that he never had. William is a monster. My monster. And I don't want him bearing my name, no less my son's. William cannot follow simple instructions, cannot control his emotions, and is too afraid to leave his own rotting vessel for even a second, even when incentivized with controlled shocks. I'm going to abandon William, leave him to mop up, Back at the diner, under constant camera supervision. I need to properly gauge how he copes with abandonment. I will continue my work and claim victims in other Freddy's locations. Just as the invasive cuckoo bird lays eggs in the nests of other birds, I shall claim victims at competing Freddy's locations, forcing them to maintain and monitor my test subjects. Another advantage of a lower density pattern of victims is their inability to gang upon me in the same place. Once enough souls are collected, I will have a substantial number of souls to produce the machine that I have hoped to build from day one. A machine that can successfully take an adult male from our realm to another, and back again. Soon, I aim to no longer be in this realm at all. Life as we know it will change, 
and you have me to thank for it.